Welcome to the Daily Update, where I'll go over the action in the market for Tuesday, October 29th, and then we'll see how things look for Wednesday, October 30th. Had another slight update. We're still lacking some conviction, even though there were more economic reports that came out. We're still looking positive when you look at the moving averages, but there's this internal weakness that's coming into the market. The mega caps and growth, as well as semiconductors, had a pretty good day. We're seeing growth holding up pretty well right now, which that's the area that really needs to shoot higher to bring the indexes higher. But we're seeing some more weakness as we look at the rest of the S&P and even into the NYSE. But again, we're still positive in the bigger picture for right now. We have some major economic reports due out later in the week. We're going to get GDP on Wednesday. We're going to get some jobs information on Thursday. And then the employment situation report on Friday. Also earnings, Google reported. And right before I started recording, I checked that. There's positive reaction to Google's results. We're going to get um, Apple, Microsoft, other companies that I can't think of right now. I have a list later on just to be aware of these things because they can really have an impact on the market. The SPX investing program, it's up, it's going, it's free until the end of 2024. Feel free to check that out. There's a link that will take you to the website. One benefit that you get from that is these videos are available to you right after they are prepared. There's an email address where if you have any questions, you are more than welcome to contact me. Also, the daily video, that's the real foundation of the analysis that I do with all the videos around the outside. Those are weekly videos, but everything is meant to tie into the daily video. Let's go back and talk about what happened and then look at some charts. We did have a gap lower open. We were looking a bit down there right at the start. We ended up opening below S2 at 58.10, but that set the intraday low for the day right off the bat. Prices were able to climb back above S2, they got above S1 at 58.17, even up to the unchanged level. Then we went positive. We were able to work up to the daily pivot at 58.30. We got up to R1 at 58.37. We didn't get up to R2 at 58.50, and then we closed below R2 in that session. That should be R2 instead of R1. The reason why these pivot points are so close to each other that's because Monday's session was pretty anemic as far as price movement, and the intraday levels are calculated on the previous day. So we were up 0.16% on, get this, above average volume. This is one of the few above average volume days that we've seen in a while. We are still positive in the short, intermediate, and long term when you look at things based on moving averages. Interest rates, they had been going up, but then they started to come down. They were virtually unchanged, but they ticked down just one notch there. That helped stocks. We're going to be getting more economic data coming out that deals with inflation. We're going to get a lot of different things that will be coming out. And we are keeping an eye on the geopolitical things that are going on, but doesn't seem to really have an impact on the market we do have, less than a week now, the U.S. election coming up. We'll have to see if there's any impact on the markets because of that. The index has ended up closing mixed. Of course, if you're in Britain and you say it the right way, you would say indices. But in America, we kind of use both. I tend to use indexes. The NASDAQ ended up setting a new all-time high. The NASDAQ 100 did not. But we're seeing a bit of confirmation now with the S&P recently setting an all-time high and now the NASDAQ as well. We're under 20 with the VIX now. We've been right around that level, going a little bit above, a little bit below. So that's why we're keeping an eye on the VIX a little bit more than usual. Mega caps and semiconductors, they had a pretty good day. They ended up outperforming and really hope, helping to keep things together. We're keeping an eye on what's happening in the Middle East, but oil isn't really reacting to that. There was a bit of a downward move before Monday's session, and there was some relief that, at least in this wave of attacks from Israel to Iran, they didn't hit their nuclear plants. And that's what the market was a little bit concerned about. But we're not seeing a real spike in oil right now. 
We just have one thing here that's looking extreme positive, and that just shows good solid momentum. When we look at the 10 period new highs and new lows for the S&P 500, long term, we're still looking solid, but we're above what before has been extreme positive as far as the 150 and 200 day simple moving averages. So we're looking pretty good. The longer term trend is still very much intact and that's to the upside. No changes yet with the scenario. We'll see if some of the economic reports come out that actually change this, but it does look like the Fed's going to be cutting rates 25 basis points at their next meeting. The dollar was up and interest rates were down just slightly. We, it was virtually unchanged, depending on what source you look at. We had closed at 4.28%. We ticked down to 4.27% in Tuesday's session. We're still inverted with the 10 to the three month. And that's been over two years now, but we're uninverted or back to being regular with the 10 to the two year. We did come in, we're still positive when we look at sentiment. We came in at 60, where it had been at 62. We're still positive with our trend, but we're coming down with the ADX, meaning that it's a weakening trend below its moving average, but it's still above 20. With the slight update, our bias is still positive, and I'm still keeping our momentum at mixed. We're kind of chopping along right now, and we do have a positive backdrop. That's why we're saying it's mixed rather than negative. So the economic reports that came out, and some of this I'll just read through the numbers. I do have a chart here, the FHFA Housing Price Index. We just keep an eye on that. It's still going up. It was up 0.3%. Last time it was up 0.2%. The Case-Shiller Home Price Index up 5.2%. They expected 5.1%, but lower than the 5.9% we saw last time. Consumer confidence. This is kind of given a reason for interest rates to start gyrating around. They expected it to come in at 99. It came in at 108.7. So folks are feeling better about things. And it's up from the 99.2 that we saw last time. The Jolts job openings creeping down here. We're at 7.443 million. Last time we had 7.861 million. So we're keeping an eye on this area. That's the employment situation. I call it all one thing together. And we're creeping down with the job openings. I don't have charts for this one. The Advanced International Trade and Goods, it doesn't have that much of an impact on the market. Came in at a minus 108.2 billion. Last time it was a minus 94.2 billion. The Advanced Retail Sales, up 0.8%. Last time they were up 0.7%. Wholesale Inventories, down 0.1%. Last time they were up 0.2%. So here are the charts that I do have. The FHFA Housing Price Index just shows how prices continue to go up here. And the Case-Shiller Home Price Index actually coming down from the previous reading. So seeing a little bit of a mixed picture there. And the job openings also still positive, still looking pretty healthy, but well off of the high levels that we had been seeing previously. And consumer confidence. We look at the blue line, that's the overall reading. And we're seeing a bit of an improvement there. And then how are people feeling right now? A little bit more of an improvement on things. And then how are people looking out into the future? That's the yellow line. So we're seeing an improvement across the board. Isabel Net, this is the overbought, oversold composite. We're coming in at 79.06. We're a little below that 80, 80 level. Usually when it gets above 75, that's where it's looking extreme. And we use other measures to gauge whether we're overbought or oversold, whether we're looking too positive or negative, but things are still looking fairly positive right now. We could justify coming down from here, which would also mean the S&P might come down as well. And then an equity pullback going in and a rally after has been a feature of past close elections, regardless of the outcome. You can see this whole jumbled mess here and who was running at that time going all over the place, but typically you'll see an upward move after the election. We'll have to see if that ends up happening this time. And manage money gold futures positions. This, for a lot of folks, they've been waiting decades in some cases for gold to really break out. And so we're seeing gold going up and not a real big expansion of contracts or people getting into these things, but they are going up as people are 
adding more to their gold futures positions. And then global fund flows. We can see here, we still see a lot of money in cash right now. Seeing some money actually going into bonds and quite a bit less going into stocks. It's kind of different than other charts that we see. And then this, since we're dealing with earnings season right now, it says earnings beats disappoint. Companies are beating their estimates at the lowest rate in almost two years, but they're still beating estimates. However, that's manipulated a bit because they tend to lowball this. And so that's why recently we've been seeing companies come out with a really good report and they even look good into the future, but we see a sell-off from that. Corporate insider sell buy ratio hits three year high. So this is positive for the market as well. And then the market cap nears 50% of the world GDP. Not a real surprise there. You still have the US economy, which is the biggest economy. And then the move index, this measures the volatility of bonds. And I do a lot of different studies, but I just wanted to show you this. This is going up as bond prices have been going down and interest rates have been going back up. And it's not really a surprise that this is going up. This is kind of like the VIX for bonds. And didn't really see anything on Twitter that was worth sharing. So here's our intraday chart where we did see a down open. And you can see these pivot points are kind of close to each other. We got down below S1, S2, but that set the low for the day. We were able to bounce up off of that, get back above S1. We got above the unchanged level, kind of chopped around the daily pivot before breaking a little bit higher above R1. Didn't quite get up to R2, but then fell down and ended up closing below R2. Excuse me, R1. And not seeing much of a change right now in the initial overnight reaction, but... We did see the futures really trailing off leading into the lower open, but then the nice little recovery that happened as the cash session was opened. This is encouraging. We see the S&P growth to value ratio. They'd have a good day that day. And if you're positive on the S&P, you like that. Intraday, we see the blue line above the red line. The blue line's going up or the red line's going down. That means that large cap growth is outperforming large cap value, which is also more positive. End of day, growth was up where value was down, and it was up for the mid caps and down more for the small caps than it was for value. So seeing a little bit of a change here, but still negative overall when we look at small cap growth to value. Mid cap growth to value, bit of an improvement there. We're more encouraged by the S&P growth to value ratio. This is going up. It'd be nice if it would continue to go up and actually break out above these previous levels. But this is showing that under the surface, there's some buying coming into the growth stocks. And that's what helps the indexes to go higher. Seeing an improvement here when we compare the growth ETF with the value ETF coming up out of the rainbow and continuing to go up. And we're seeing also an improvement here, discretionary to staples. This ratio continues to go up also. So those are some encouraging things if you're more positive on the S&P. Large cap growth, still looking pretty solid here. As far as our trend, we're still declining below the moving average. Now, we're still trending since we're above 20, but it shows that we're weakening because we're the below the moving average. Green line's on top, but it's coming down. The red line's below, but it's actually coming up. So that's a little bit of a concern there. In the short term, also a weakening trend, still positive with the green line going down and the red line going up. And this little blip right here, that's because we had an above average volume day. We'll see if that is able to pick up. We dropped down below 20 again here with the VIX, both with the line chart and the bar chart. But we're still getting high overall readings. And when the VIX goes down, the VIX of the VIX also declines, both here with the bar chart and the line chart. The momentum of the VIX is still down overall, but if we chop sideways and then have a bit of a down day and the VIX goes up, we could see the MACD actually cross over positive, showing an upward trend to the VIX, or at least momentum. Here's a historical chart. The red line, that's what's been happening with the VIX, and then compared to what typically has happened historically, and we're kind of not really matching it up all that well here. There, there's some little spikes, but not... It's not really sticking to it all that close. We were down with this fear gauge, up slightly with this other fear gauge, so a bit of a contradiction there. 
still getting a very high reading with the volatility risk premium as there is risk that is being figured into the market 30 days from now. So that's another thing that's kind of lining up with the high readings that we're getting from the VIX. Equity put call ratio did go up on the daily chart. We're going back up here with the five-day chart and the 10-day chart, which tends to be more negative. This could be some pre-election hedging because we have the employment situation report, then we have the election, then the Fed is meeting. There's a lot of variables out there that the market could potentially really react to. And when we see this really going up, that means they're buying more puts than calls, and you buy puts in order to hedge your long positions. The advanced decline line, holding up okay. It actually declined a little bit here based on price and volume, but still above the advancing moving average. So internally, we're looking okay here. And drifting off a little bit with the new highs, new lows with the five-day, we're still declining with the 10-day, really seeing a drop-off in the new highs. That's the negative part, but the positive part is that we're not really seeing any expansion of the new lows. So this internal measure is also looking pretty solid. We came down almost to the moving average here with the accumulation distribution, but we were able to bounce up off of that. You can see the little bar here is slightly above average. Haven't seen one of those days since we saw that big down day over a week ago. This is a little more negative in the short term. We're below zero with the 19-day advanced decline ratio. We're still positive with the 39-day advanced decline ratio. This is a little bit of a concern here. On one hand, the negative side is that the red line continues to go down. On the positive side, the histogram was up. So we want to see this continue to show more strength and eventually turn the red line back up if we are more positive. But taken together, since it's green, it is still positive. And we're turning slightly negative here with the chicken oscillator. We've dropped below the midpoint. Declining with the vortex. On the green line, going up with the red line, but the green line is still above the red line. Positive, but showing some weakness here. And not much of a change here. When we look at the cumulative, the cumulative advanced decline line for the S&P based on price, not much of a change here based on volume either. Seeing a little bit of a disconnect now as the red line's going down, even though they're on different scales, it's going down where the S&P's been holding up a little bit better. We're seeing a little more weakness in the broader market. And we actually dropped below the moving average for the first time in quite some time with the cumulative advanced decline line on the NYSE. And we're still above the moving average here with our regular NYSE advanced decline line. Also some little bit of weakness, but not an awful lot of movement. Still above the moving averages here. We break that out on common stock based on price. Not really much of a move there. Not much of a move here either based on volume. The advanced decline line's holding up okay for right now. Turned down a little bit, but still above the moving average with the NYSE common stock. A little bit lower, even though the S&P was slightly positive. Internally, it wasn't as strong, but we're still above the moving average here. Declining above the moving average with the mid caps. Declining and above the moving average with the small caps. And we're down below 50 here. We look at the stocks inside the S&P inside the S&P that are above their 20 period moving averages and we're below 50 and declining. So short term, that's a little bit more negative. Declining, but still positive with those stocks above their 50 day moving average. Also declining with the 100 and the 200 period moving averages inside the S&P. Not much of a change here on the daily chart, just kind of chopping more or less sideways right now. On the bottom, we were above average with volume. Declining with the 20, 50, and slightly lower here with the 200 period moving averages on the S&P. Coming up a little bit after being extreme negative with the Stoke RSI, but we're still below the midpoint. And we're above the midpoint with the Williams percent R. A little bit above the midpoint here with the CCI 14 and the CCI 20. And we're not seeing any extreme readings right now with the stochastic studies. A little bit above the midpoint in the short term, flat, but above the midpoint in the intermediate term, declining after being extreme positive in the long term. Slightly a little more positive here with the force index. The condition of the 20 period moving average, well, we're below the lines here, but we're pretty much going sideways right now. If we see more weakness, these lines will come down. Naturally, if we go above this line, these lines will turn up. 
So we're just kind of treading sideways for the time being, but we're still above the 20 period moving averages. And this, both of these lines are providing support. We're still slightly above the midpoint with our standard deviations chart. And we're turning a little bit negative here with the balance of power. We dropped slightly below the midpoint. The condition of the 50 period moving average, still below the blue line, but the lines are still kind of going up here. It would be more positive if we would get above that. It's going to turn more negative if we continue to drop below those lines. Still looking positive with the go no go system with the darker blue bars, still above the midpoint with the highest high value. TTM squeeze continues to trail off, and that's been a negative divergence that we've seen now pretty much for the month of October. Still positive, but dropping slightly with the ease of movement. Flat, but positive with the Arun indicator. And after being extreme with the S&P McClellan oscillator, we bounced up off of that. We did decline, but we're not extreme negative. So this is another concern and some weakness that we're seeing. The summation index based on price and volume continue to decline. Declined here, and we're below zero with the NYSE McClellan oscillator. So we're going down with the summation index based on price and volume. Showing a bit of an improvement here with the swung and trading oscillator, but we're still below zero based on price and volume. Momentum has switched over more negative with the PMO below its moving average and declining, also declining based on price and volume here. Not much of an improvement, actually ticked down a little bit with the PMOs that are rising after getting extreme negative, still declining with the buy signals and the PMOs that are above zero. We've gone from neutral to positive with the elder's impulse system. That up, slight upward move helped turn things more positive there. We are still positive with the parabolic SAR. We're declining now a little bit more with the slope oscillator, a short-term oscillator. We're also negative with the MACD. So we look at all of these declining in the short term, both with the slope and TSI. Our three intermediate term oscillators are declining, going down with the tricks and still pretty much on the moving average with the KST. The tricks and KST are longer term oscillators. We're negative with the Copic curve, another momentum oscillator. No longer extreme positive, coming down slightly with the Sean trend meter. Decline, but still above 50 with the money flow and declined, but still above 50 with the ultimate oscillator. Since we had an up day, that counts all the volume according to the on-balance volume as being positive, so we are still above the moving average. And we're still looking good here with the RSI intermediate term based on 14 periods, as well as the short term based on nine periods. Still above all the moving averages here. But this is a little more of a concern. We've actually dropped below 70 now with the bullish percent index for the S&P. That's a sell signal to some folks. We're also declining with the NYSE bullish percent index where we're going up with the NASDAQ 100 bullish percent index. And these are the mega caps and the real big companies. If that could continue, that would also benefit the S&P 500 since those stocks are also included in that index. Still hanging out slightly above this mini rainbow here when we look at the 20 period simple moving average of the open high low close and kind of doji indecisiveness right now with the hike in ashy, but still leaning more positive where we're negative here with the keggy chart. We're red now and pointing down where the Ranko chart is positive, but the three line break is also positive. Long term, still looking pretty solid here with our 150 and 200 period moving averages. Still positive across the board with the Keller market model on all time frames and all, on, all, on all indexes. Still positive in the long term with bonds based on price with commodities. We're negative in the short and long term. And we're still in a downtrend with the U.S. dollar long term. We had tech and communication that were positive, and those are the areas that we want to be positive. Discretionary ended up being down. That would be another area that would really help the market to go higher. Utilities ended up being down the most. So we saw some red and some blue or green. We had the BPI cross below 70, which I just showed you. NASDAQ got above 18.6. NASDAQ did end up setting a new all-time high. Discretionary set a two-year high. That's encouraging. And we're seeing real estate, which it's not liking this rise in interest rates. It had a BPI cross below 80. 
communication crosses above 70. So that is more growth oriented and that's more positive. So even though we saw the red things here, not so much the S&P, but the real estate, that's more defensive, but they're reacting more to interest rates. The other areas that we saw alerts are tending to be more positive. Seeing a little bit of a disconnect here as the S&P is holding up a little bit better than the red line, which is the equal weighted version. And yes, they're on different scales, but they tend, when you see these lines pretty much with each other, that means the broader market is doing better. So we're seeing it doing not quite as good right now. And we're also seeing that confirmed in other charts that we look at. We're going up here. Haven't shown this chart in a while. This is the ratio between the weighted version of the S&P and the equal weight version. That just means that the bigger stocks are leading things higher. And this could be earnings driven if we see more follow through with this to the upside. Of course, if we see selling, that could lead things to the downside as well. The Dow kind of chopping sideways over the last few sessions after recently setting an all-time high and still having this resistance above this. You just can't seem to get above that pivot point. We are negative with the Elder's Impulse System for the diamonds. Here we are with the NASDAQ setting an all-time closing high up here, but we have this pivot point above, and the NASDAQ tends to pay attention to this. So we're going to be watching this to see if the NASDAQ is still able to get above this dashed line that you see. Did not set an all-time high with the NASDAQ 100, but it was still up almost a percent. We are positive with the Elder's Impulse System with the Qs, but the momentum is negative, but improving. Another good update, we could actually cross back above the moving average with the PPO. Small caps, of course, they had to be down. So it's just, it's really, I don't do small caps, but a lot of people have just been waiting, waiting, waiting. They think there's a breakout, they get into it, and then boom, those gains just seem to evaporate. But we're still positive. When we look at the Elder's Impulse System for the small caps, we look at the Russell 2000 small caps, declining but still above 50 with the RSI, still above the 50-day moving average here, but the momentum continues to be negative. The mid caps also kind of chopping sideways right now, but they continue to be positive with the Elder's Impulse System. And the Wilshire, a broad market measure, it was up slightly. Not really breaking out, but not breaking down either, and still above both moving averages. Also, holding up fairly well with the total U.S. stock ETF. This is more positive when we look at the context of this going down. That means staples are underperforming tech, but we're concerned because we just saw a recent golden cross, meaning on a trending basis, staples are outperforming tech. Financial sector down slightly, but still looking pretty solid. The FANG index was up 1.72%, but not back to its all-time high. Apple was up 0.12%. We'll be reporting this week on earnings. Amazon also reporting this week up 1.3%. Microsoft still bouncing up off of the 200-day moving average, up one and a quarter percent. Google, which just re well. I get these all confused. It was up 1.78%. Meta, also up 2.62%. This is what held things together, or these big stocks actually showing some improvement here. NVIDIA was up a little more than a half a percent, and Tesla was down 1.14% here, but still above its 50-day moving average. Netflix up 1.38%, still looking pretty solid there. After we had been seeing an improvement between U.S. stocks and world stocks, it ticked down just a little bit in the short term. It's still declining with the longer term correlation. Oil was down a little bit more into the 67 range. The dollar has just been really strong lately, even though based on the moving averages, it's still in a downtrend. And we were down just a little bit here with the 10-year yield, up just a little bit here with the 10-year based on price. Seeing some improvement, and this is encouraging, Qs to S&P, above the moving average. We came down with discretionary to the S&P, but we're still above the moving average. And we're seeing an improvement here when we compare large cap growth to large cap value. So the large caps, mid caps, and even the small caps are showing an improvement with these ratios. This overall still continues to decline. Even though utilities were down overall, the S&P to utilities ratio has been going down. We want this to go up to be more positive for the S&P. This is encouraging, though. The staples to S&P ratio, when this is going down, that means the staples are outperforming. 
So what's our outlook for Wednesday? We're still positive, and we're above the 20-period moving averages, and we're seeing weakness, at least in the background. Now, we are potentially coming into a time of positive seasonality from November in through December after we get through the election, but we have no guarantee that that will happen. That's just historically what has happened. We did get earnings on Tuesday from Google. We'll have Microsoft and Meta reporting on Wednesday, Apple and Amazon on Thursday, and then the big employment report on Friday, and the election next week, and the Fed meeting. So the market, you can see why things are a little bit subdued right now from a, a trend perspective, because the market has really got a lot that's going to be hitting it soon. We're going to get the MBNA Mortgage Applications Index on Wednesday, as well as the ADP Employment Change, the Advanced International Trades and Goods, and Retail and Wholesale Inventories. Didn't we just get those? And then GDP will be coming out as well. And that's the first time for the third quarter number. So that could be pretty influential. And pending home sales will be coming out as well. And then the geopolitical things, just to keep in the back of our mind. But the market seems to be in its own little world right now. Here is the calendar. Yeah, we had international trade on Wednesday. I don't know why I have it. Okay, it is on Wednesday. Should have been here on Tuesday. You can see all these areas that are marking gold. These are the real impactful economic reports. And we've got a lot of them coming up. And here's another look at the calendar for the week right now. And what the previous reading was and what the forecast for some of these will be. Seasonally, on October 30th, it tends to be pretty positive, 66.7 across the board for all the indexes. And here's Carson, no relation to Johnny, I don't think. What they've done is they've created a cycle composite for the S&P 500. And this is a proprietary composite of various cycles suggests potential strength is coming soon. This is what's been happening here with the 2024, that's the blue. And then what they have found, according to their research, going into the end of the year and even the beginning of 2025. And then this is kind of an adjustment of a chart that after this, I'll probably put this over into the weekly chart. But the we have the second half of November, which is a little bit stronger than the first half. But still, both of them together end up historically being positive. Then we're coming up to the 22nd trading day of the month. Now, we see some positive action here with the solid green line. We see more positive seasonality with the dash green line, which is the S&P during an election year. So from now and then through Halloween on the 31st, we do see some positive seasonality. But Wednesday in 2023 was the most negative day of the week, but it's positive so far in 2024. Better than Tuesday, but not as good as some of the other days that we've been seeing. And then we're seeing a gradual drop off here of the blackout periods for those stocks that are reporting their earnings so they can't come in and buy their own stock. And then here's another uh, seasonal thing. November to April tends to be the most positive period for the market with an average return of 7.1% and we're up 77% of the time. So the warning signs, we still have this Hindenburg Omen just hanging out in the background. No updates there, so I haven't been showing the chart. Watching the staples, utilities, and healthcare, they've been under some little bit of weakness now, and that's helping the market, at least under the surface. The 5- and 10-day equity put call ratios are going up. That could be some pre-election, pre-economic reports, uh, pre-Fed meeting hedging that's going on there. Now, accumulation distribution. It's looking okay. It's still positive for right now, but we, we came down to that moving average and we were able to bounce up off of that. But I like to keep these three indicators together. The chicken money flow is declining. We'd like to see more strength there where the chicken oscillators actually turn negative. It's dropped below its midpoint. The 20 period moving average study of those stocks in the S&P, we are negative there. The swell and trading oscillator improved, but still negative. And both the S&P and NYC McClellan oscillators, as well as summation indexes, these are still negative. On a momentum basis, with the oscillators and the copy curve, we're also negative that way. Growth to value, we just mainly kind of watch this. It's not that they're negative, 
but we're seeing an improvement in growth. We saw that on Friday, not so much on Monday. We'll see if there's more follow through with this as these earnings reports come out and discretionary to staples is actually looking pretty good right now. And the, the momentum for the NASDAQ 100 is still negative, but another update that could switch that back positive. And we do have the advanced decline line holding up. We've seen some weakness there, but pretty much everything is holding up above their moving averages. And now the S&P bullish percent index, it's no longer extreme positive, but all of these, except for the NASDAQ 100, so I should say the S&P and NYSE bullish percent indexes are declining, saw a little bit of a bounce up with the NASDAQ 100. Parabolic SCR is still positive. The Vortex is positive, even though... Showing a little bit of weakness there. The money flow, ease of movement, and ultimate oscillators. These are secondary indicators. Just using use them for confirmation. Financial sector pulled back, but still positive there. So our conclusion, we're positive. Weakness is developing. We're seeing that in the background. But for right now, growth seems to be doing rather well. We're still positive in the short term since we're above the 20-period moving averages. Intermediate term, we are seeing some weakness, but this could really show some improvement if grow, growth continues to show improvement as well. And we are still positive in the long term. Thank you. I hope you found this helpful. I hope you have a great day and I will talk to you in the next video.